is beautiful. It is a thing of glory. But we've got bigger fish to fry today. Sheffield Wednesday and Chancery. Or Chancery. Chancery. I don't care how you say that man's name. Saying he's gonna stop funding as owner of Sheffield Wednesday because of riots, apparently. Oh, hate me and I take money away from your club. The man has lost it, so today we've gotta to regain it and take Sheffield Wednesday, a historic club, to the top. 6.695 million in the bank, which is, to be fair, a decent wager in the championship compared to. Oh, not compared to Southampton's. But we should try to be okay. As Cisco is the manager right here, he's turning up a little bit late and it doesn't look like him. I haven't bothered creating him because I don't see him lasting very long. We're stepping in as kind of like the board, the new board. We're demanding that he plays wing play. That is the tactic we're going with. I could go counter attacking, but I want us to cope in the league. Coaches have been applied to try and fix this team, Barry Bannon, Josh Windass and Vasquez are our only players over the rating of 70. Which isn't good, but then again, we've got to rotate this squad around. This is what we're going to switch it up to. So we've gone with a big formation relying on wingers because that's the thing we want to play. The problem is our right winger is Musaba, who to me looks like the weak point. Defense could do with a bit of strength and we know the midfield is our strongest point. Thing is, look at the wage bill. We've got some high wages to say they've just come from League One. Barry Bannon robbing us. Oh, and John Buckley and Devis Vasquez are actually only on loan. Brilliant. The board, which is supposed to be us, but let's talk about there's another one. Make the team older? Now, now what is this all about? Make the team actually older. I mean, we've got a youth academy here that I want to use. Emir Watkins isn't the best rated, but he's going straight in. That's to prove a point, alongside selling Lee Gregory to start off with. And that, of course, is to make space for signing. Number one, he comes from Crystal Palace. The new number nine, Malcolm Ebiwai, is going to be our wide man. He's that immediate replacement for Musa, but despite the same rating, he's a lot, lot younger. Brilliant first signing, and there will be more. With five million we have in the budget, but we've got to travel to Plymouth first. If I'm not wrong, Plymouth started off at home against Huddersfield, so they've got the fixtures the wrong way around. Team's a little bit unfit, but we had a large preseason. Matt Smith, speaking of large, up front, and he scores alongside Ebby Way. We've got more wins than they actually have in real life already. A brilliant start for that man right there, and we do have another signing, but this is only a loan signing. It didn't pop up straight away, but welcome to the club from Union Berlin, Van Duven, who's only 18 year old, and I wish it would have been a loan to buy. But you know when you get a young striker in, you've got to get an old one to go with that, so we've got Ogawa from, I think, the Dutch League? Yeah, I'm correct in saying that. 1.9 million. We do have 2 million left, and our start to this season has been pretty solid. The only question is, will Sheffield Wednesday be okay for the remainder of the season? And the answer to that question I asked moments ago is we're okay. 17th, I mean, it's worse than I thought we'd be. But when Ipswich are 19th, you know the league's a little bit on its head. Head. Morale wise at the club, we've got a bit of a problem going on. Transfer requests already? Are, are you joking? I think we've got to fight to keep his job, so maybe to do that, we've got to sign some older players to keep this board happy. But we've only got 2 million so far. Absolutely brilliant. The one that I'm trying to save us with is Aaron Gunnarsson. Could he fire us up the table? It's got Gunnarsson in his name, do you get it? Please tell me he can fix his problems. There's Christian Onsaldi as well, he's 37. This team is absolutely shattered, but please tell me it can survive in the championship for another season. Oh, and we have survived. We have survived in 19th in the league, 46 points, 20 new defeats. I do not like that. I believe we kept his job for one reason and one reason only, and that's a quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Every single one of them want us sacked as Michael Smith. Oh my days, he was top scorer. Windass and Ogawa were actually second and third respectively. Gassama actually got eight. Abawi only got six. This team needs some work when John Buckley leaves. It was as highest rated but only on loan. So after one season of keeping our job successfully, they make things even harder. Sign a crucial player and make almost £9 million in profit, as then they want, of course, 
more old players. Budget wise, it's got a lot better. So he's put some money in. Them bullies must have gone away. Chairman not scared of his fan base anymore as this is the team that we still have. And I wish I could sign young players because that's realistically not getting promoted. What if we just blanked the objectives? I'd love to, but I think we'd get sacked. So before we spend this money, I'm doing contracts and I've just realized this guy's called Pierce Charles. Very close to Prince Charles, who of course doesn't exist anymore. It's King Charles, but weird that he's here at Wednesday. It doesn't matter that he's actually here because we'll be replacing him straight away with Scott Carson. We need old players. I know it's a free signing, but hey, we need old players. At least he's not coming across alone because Ryan Ledston has actually signed from PNE, coming across from North End. He's cost us his first big sum of money, which is 1.4 million. And I hate to do it again, but another free agent now in Yunis Abdilahamid. I seriously hate these expectations placed upon us because we're signing players to get promoted, like Tyler Roberts. To be fair, Birmingham's up there, but but mm, that's not a promotion player. It's an okay team. It should survive. But there's no way that's pushing for anything. So let's just go into this season with Roberts. Against one of his former clubs in QPR. Do I have faith that we start off with a win? We actually do. I questioned the faith literally moments ago. But we've won the game. Ledston and Cocky with two. Am I getting cocky? But is this a good start? And I didn't check as well. But we need to make some more signings. Because there's expectations on a rivalry this season. As the Blades are back in our division. So dragging in a youth prospect now. I think I'm going to ditch the old man approach. And that's Cyber. That's what we're calling him. Not by his second name. So this season, to be fair, we're expected to fight for promotion. But I just want to be above Sheffield United. So the first player, Kenneth Powell. We've stole from QPR, who we beat on the opening day. And another team we beat in the run-up is Bristol City. So we've stole Ross McCory, who's a right-back from them. He's on a high wage, however. As them two players deplete the budget, but complete the team. Oh, and this season, the first result, we can only talk for the first result, against the Blades was two apiece. The results overall didn't look too bad, as we're not sitting too bad. Ninth in the league, already a little bit through January. Does this count as a fight for promotion? Oh, the rivals are sitting bottom of the spot. Five points clear, so we've got to leapfrog them, please. It's also worth saying, with them scouts or or coaches, whatever they're called. We did put them on defense and it's improved our fullbacks magnificently and Bernard, but McCory. Oh, McCory looks fabulous. Bench looks good as well. No one's actually asking to leave the club. I just mean Josh Windass being unhappy, but he's got no choice. He stays. He hopefully scores in another promotion final. The only player that we've actually signed in this window as well is one walking the, through the door in Julian Fazier. I can't say that name, but he He's 40 year old and you know what objective that completes oh my days and ladies and gentlemen Sheffield Wednesday are a championship playoff outfit what did I just say about Josh Windass what did I say what did I say what did I say we got 16 goals out of Dijedi Gasama who actually isn't a starting player in this squad Tyler Roberts with 12 or Gower with 11 who's Actually, the main striker, which is a bit confusing. Players growing at phenomenal rates. The only worry now is one of our defenders in Abdullahamid has gone down. So Diaby has to step in, despite being very angry with being stepped out in the first place. And Prince Charles, or Pierce Charles, is back on the bench for this one. And this first game right here is going to be a 2-2 against the Gagan pressing Watford. Diaby actually stepped in the team and did score late on. You can tell we've got a good defensive coach. Because both players were defenders who scored. Being Zisco in this save, I did actually look at a lot of Watford players. But I did look at their ability to take penalties. Asprilla has let his team down. Oh, and Hurtado. But Josh Windass with a miss. Okay, he's saving it for the final. Which we're going to. And I am very intrigued what's going to happen here. Because Luton Town are our team in the playoff final. Come on. Rob Edwards. Rob Edwards warming his players up. But that man right there, Josh Windass, the camera picked up on him because they know what he can do at this stadium. They're going to actually have the first attack right here and squeeze forward with his through the legs. And Juckler has scored the first goal for the Hatters. Behind in the final. 
behind on the chase. Oh, and it actually could get worse here as well. He's got a penalty as the main man, and he sent us the wrong way. It's going from bad to worse. Oh, Luton Town are teaching us a lesson right here. As Duda slipped it in for three. As eventually we do get beaten. And that's us losing in the final. Good luck to Luton. But we've got to be up there next year. Right. Okay. We're getting rid of all the old boys. Because we don't need to do that anymore. We need an Englishman. We need youth players. And we need to be automatically promoted. The team definitely getting there. I mean Mansvirk in that midfield is absolutely amazing. Same with Makori. And same with the budget. Without further ado I'm going to dive into half of these players on this list. Because you know we've got to sign a few. My dear. Days it feels good to sign players who aren't ancient. As we're doing a bit of the uh, Devise shopping, Ruben van Bommel joins Mansverk from, of course, the Dutch leagues. But joining them both from that league is Richard Ledesma. Unrecognisable with those two signings is the Sheffield Wednesday squad. As all we need now is either a centre back, a goalkeeper, or both. Nah, I'm gonna go just for the signing of one of these, and it's gonna be a goalkeeper. Bailey Peacock Farrell returns to the Owls. So with everyone into the club, that is how the team looks. You can see Peacock Farrell just hiding there. And we play Stoke at an eight o'clock kickoff. Wow. We obviously don't look prepared for this season, but we've gotta be, as we've gotta get automatically promoted somehow. And halfway through this season, look at us, we're going absolutely flawlessly. I mean, there is flaws. We're not in the automatic place. There's five points off. But still, if you would have given me fourth, I would have took your hand off. Where are the rivals, though? I'm guessing they actually got automatically promoted last season. I didn't check. Damn. As Leicester are in ninth. Huge surprise, that one. But we've been in the championship for a long time now. We've got four million to spend. But do we really need to spend it? There's two weak players in the team, as you can see. But I'd rather replace them with big overall improvements if we do get to the Prem next season. And probably as expected, it will be the playoffs. Oh no, Leicester got there. Ryan Ledston's going to have to give us a bit of an insight in how to play Ryan Lowe's Preston. In terms of our squad, I mean, how many unhappy faces compared to brilliant, brilliant players? I honestly don't get how we're doing that Bad. I don't get how Gazama as well is scoring 26 goals and he's the same rating that was at Gower. So despite the unhappy faces, can we still somehow get a result? Uh, a draw at home isn't great, but just like we did against Watford last season, we do get to the final courtesy of Ledzema and Gassama. Middlesbrough in the final. We're not going to simulate this one because it didn't give us the luck last time. Can we do what we failed to do last season still? We've been with this wing play and we have winged our way to the Premier League. Sheffield Wednesday have done it. We will meet the Blades. We will beat the top six and we will beat the big time. Beat, I said, because we're going to do it sometime. There it is. There's the link up we wanted. Not a good link up, by the way. We've linked up with the money, though. 53 million for a first season in the Prem ain't bad. Please tell me that ain't bad. Please tell me. Because they just want avoiding relegation. They want increase in sales. And they want the youth. That's a fun U-turn from getting the squad to old age pensioners. Premier League as well. We're going to keep hold of a few players on that list. And we're going to make them balanced. Because we're going for a standard, not balanced, the standard tactical vision. And this is the first time we've actually got to fight to survive in the Premier League after coming up from the Championship. So we're going to be signing... Probably mostly championship players. First one's a free agent. Little bit of a scummy one. Rob Atkinson. We've got to use the free market sometimes. As that championship player is joined by another one. Lee Buchanan of Birmingham. As this next one though isn't. Oh. Um, he kind of is a championship player actually. He's always out on loan from Leeds. Joe Geldhart. 12 million breaks the bank for Sheffield Wednesday. This is how the team looks now. A lot stronger. We're getting a centre back coming in in a few minutes. Don't worry. Here is that centre half. Number six. Bruno. Not for Nange, But he's come from Stoke. He's an Italian 21 year old. Who could be really good for the future. As finally here is the last man. Lukic. That's the pro clubs kit. We're not playing pro clubs here, man. We're playing be a pro club in the Prem. But yeah, Sasa Lukic from Fulham. 11 million, so he's not as expensive as Geldhart. But he's one of the highest rated players in the team alongside him. 
Of course, it's Hanswerk or Mansverk, I should have been saying it right, who is the highest rated, who's training to be an actual centre mid. And that is how our team looks going into this season. Brilliant improvement from Peacock. Farrell as well in goal. Can he be Farrell in keeping the first team we play out? And our first game actually is Wolverhampton, who were our first save of FC24. Come on, I fancy us against Wolves, you know, a four o'clock kickoff. Still, though, we don't fail to do well in it. Can we kick off? at four every week actually van bommel and geldhart come on wednesday <laughs> i am not celebrating us being 13th but i am celebrating sheffield united in 19th i am of course only playing into the wednesday faithful in this save of course i don't have a bias for any particular we still have six million to spend and we have one player wanting out some unhappy faces but it's only dishon bernard who submitted a request so if you can sell him get some money in along with this six million we could buy a replacement and yes we have got rid of dishon bernard finally but he's gone for zero pounds. That means we stuck with the five million until the end of the season, which we're gonna try and get to now. But hold up, hold up, hold up. We've gotta see what happens here first with them going out of the league, hopefully next season. We've got to try and beat the rivals. Ball whipped forward. Oh, my days. That's a good one. Samuel with an early save. Do really like the Premier League graphics this year as Joe Geldhart. He has a ball on here. It's into Gasama. Oh, no, though. Oh, no. Chef United have a penalty. Jao Pedro against Bailey Peacock Farrell. And that's not the way I wanted it to go. And uh, <clears throat> I believe that's the last time I... Ever really do the quick simulation. At least I was right with saying that we would be surviving this season. And Sheffield United, that one win won't do you nothing. 14th, Leeds United stay up, so we've still got a bit of a rivalry to go in the Prem. Relatively straightforward season, that one, with Gasama still firing a Bowie. He's been brilliant all the time he's been here. Same with Geldhart. And we did have a semi-decent cup run. Round of 16, Coventry winning 12-11 on penalties. If only we could finish around 12th or 11th next season again. Not much money again this season, but I tell you what, mid-table again, we should be able to do it if we don't lose any players. And I tell you what, I think we're getting a bit of a cult hero here on the channel because Leon Bailey's been signed two out of two saves in this but he was just perfect for the price to come to the owls and hopefully build us on and it's his old team up first actually in this not brighton but villa still need one player to improve that squad before we get into it maybe not before the game but we'll get one in after the team's fully fit not as sharp but it doesn't have to be gasama steals us a point at least after that we have managed to get another player in though i think this may be our budget one but Borja Cunha, the defender from Lyon, different gravy. He's better than Bruno already. He is four years younger and he will be our starting partnership, actually, with Atkinson, who's really grown into this squad. Oh, thank God there's worse clubs in this league than us. At the moment, that is as well, because we're just sitting on top of that bottom three. That is not how I envisage this season going, especially with an improved team. I mean, Van Bommel, get off the bench. Get in the first team. We've got some 80 rateds about. But they're not doing us justice. Acuna's growing, but not really carrying. I am going to actually scout goalkeepers, even though nothing's showing up from our scout, which is brilliant. Maybe another midfielder. Maybe another centre-back. I've had to warm myself to a new player because he needs to come into the team straight away. And we've warmed ourselves to warmed Omari. Please, can he make an impact? Another one from Fulham, like Sasa Lukic, to fix our season up. And I can't lie, this second half of the season, it really looks like we've lit it up. We actually weren't too far off Tottenham in seventh, which would have been continental football. Could you imagine Wednesday there? I mean, we have got the players now. I, I skipped to the squad, should I say. That team has defence, just a right back now, and a goalkeeper. And Lukic is a captain, but maybe he gets replaced to make this squad a genuine contender for European football.
Right, okay. Start of this season, I'm interested into seeing if the board are on our wavelength. They are. They do want European football. South American players. Not happening, that. Youth development, going to try and make happen. At least we've got freedom with signings. 64 million now in the bank, so that should be each position we need to strengthen, strengthened. So Zisco's gone ahead and signed his first man. <laughs> I'm still laughing that he's called Zisco, our manager. How's he not been sacked yet? Anyway, we've signed Baku from Chelsea, the German right back. He's the first one in. 22.7 record fees continue to be broken. Oh, I was going to say ruins that last transfer record, but we can't sign Gavin Bazunu. Our second choice was Mads Hermansen anyway from Leicester City, and he's actually, what? A third of his price. Although we don't have a backup striker for this powerful squad that we have. Mike Gamble on Musaba being the backup. Change his position round and try and get money in for one position. But if I show you who we start the season off with. Luton Town. If we don't get revenge on this team that beat us in the playoff seasons ago. I don't know what he's up with us. Come on. But we actually ended up losing two games in a row after that. So we've had to bring someone in. And make it a big one for the last one. No signings in January. We've kissed away the rights by signing Leon Goretzka. We've put a lot into this squad to try and fulfill the board's dreams and our own. We have got to be in Europe. And the FA Cup is what's showing up. Before we actually, of course, go into that, we need to see the league. <laughs> We are five points off Liverpool. We could honestly be winning the league. It is not out of reach. This squad is something special. I mean, look at Mansfeld. What a signing he was for this team. Gassama's still 83 overall. And the team's got improvements everywhere apart from, of course, the old man Goretzka. We don't have a striker on the bench as well. That's how wonderfully we've done just with Gassama. And we've got Carabao Cup semi-finals, which is wonderful, but I'm going to keep on simming. Oh, and it wasn't our league win that we wanted, but we were close and we have skipped Europe. The Europa League, that is, because we're into the champions. Wednesday have done it. We've beaten Chelsea by a point and a goal to keep our spot in fourth in the FA Cup. Coventry, Newcastle, enjoy your final, lads. Carabao... Tottenham got there. Oh, they beat us on penos. I am still over the moon with how we've done. Look at the team as well. Goretzka's stayed at an 83. He must be doing well because usually the old boys go down all the way. Van Bommel top scorer. Kasama second. And Joe Geldhard. Love it from you, my friend. Woohoo! I keep making that sound. But this time it's warranted with 154 million. I was thinking I had to sell Mansberg. But we don't. We sign a keeper, a midfielder, a defender, basically anyone now. And I didn't sign a player from South America last season, but I certainly sent a scout there. Look at the growth. The game's broken. I put this guy out on loan off screen last season. 99 pace. Are you for real? So that's an attacker replacement just out of the window. We don't need any of them. We literally just need midfielders, defenders, and goalkeepers. And hang on, hang on, hang on again. We've got the expectation of reaching the final. The final of the Champions League. Getting the Champions League again and reach the final of the cup is what the board wants as well. So now... Now we feel that pressure. We had it good without pressure for a little bit now, but we're going to bring some boys in to try and actually push for what the board wants. So the first one through the door, you might not expect, but Money Mace, he's coming literally for the moolah to Sheffield Wednesday. Starting to knock on a little bit, but before he came in, we actually got another, a steal on Justin Bijlow as a backup at Liverpool. We couldn't let him stay that. He's not the only steal from Liverpool. No, no, no. As long as he doesn't fall out with Mason Mount, the Man United player. Bernardo Silva went from City to Liverpool and now teams up with Money Mace at Sheffield Wednesday. The Owls are on a hoot with the business, literally. But of course, we're not finished there because welcome Castello Lucabri allows us to sell our wonder kid who's still not fully grown because we've got no time to let him grow. We've got to do it this season. Acuna, you're out and probably getting sold. That is the team for a big push on. We've got left footers in Silver and Lucabri. We headhunted them for the left foots. Or should I say we searched them by their feet, but that sounds kind of weird. There he goes, 50 million already made back. Cheers, Borja. We have 71 million to literally improve that squad. Do we actually go out and get an attacker, even though I said we don't need one? 
That's where the money goes. Yeah, why not give a reason for the paparazzi to get their cameras out? Takafusa Kubo, he is on fire with Sociedad. So now, hopefully, on fire with the Owls. A huge signing. Absolutely huge. That breaks his budget, I think. 62. Maybe Luke was more. I didn't actually check. I've just been throwing money at it. Ooh, the board's not happy with the amount we've spent as well. That's typical of them. So we're going to prove we're worthy of the spend it cheer, but United are in town. Come on. Our standard play is unmatched. Oh, it is matched. Of course, it's matched the bloody beaten us. We also won and then drew to Chelsea after that. We can't be drawing to Chelsea when in the Champions League, which isn't announced right now. But now it is, and we've got Bayer Leverkusen, Bailey's old team with Ajax. Uh, that's Hanverg's old team, if I'm not wrong. And then Genk. We've got this. I believe we've got this. Alrighty, so we are fifth in the table as it stands. Not the most perfect of things, but Champions League, we're through. Dortmund, did we actually finish top of the group? Because Inter got Leverkusen and we finished second and got Dortmund. Perfect stuff. But then again, I've just said that and caught a glimpse of how we just got through. Probably on head to head, I'm guessing. Dortmund not gonna be an easy team. Then again, PSG are there, but, 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 but I, I think we might have a shot. And of course, if you want to beat the best, and of course, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. So let's get stuck in straight away to Dortmund. We've got to try and beat them at home, and we do, Van Bommel. And we've got to be confident, or even grow further in confidence, because you can see... We beat Man United in a cup, but that wasn't any cup. That was the Carabao Cup final that puts a trophy in the cabinet again. We have to be beating them. Yes, when I open my eyes, we have done. Literally shut them and the game just sims straight to it. I just had a heart skip a beat. I thought we'd been beaten. We were on the night, but not on penalties. Hey, and looking at other results, Man City's out, PSG's out, Real Madrid's out. We could stand a chance. And that team that knocked Paris out, yep, Juventus. We've drawn them next. Look at them suspensions for us, man, as well. We've got no Kubo or Mason Mount in the home leg first. But they won't have a Pedri. They won't have a Pedri. We've drawn two a P. And I tell you what, they'll have a good team still without Pedri. We're without Buchanan. But can we get through? Come on, McCory. He's the man on the bench at right back. And AC Milan. With Leeds and Sheffield United surrounding it. That's just rubbing it into them Yorkshire rivals. Buchanan's back and Buchanan in the team. We beat them first leg, Mount and Gassama. They've got a good team, but it's not good enough to beat the Mighty Wednesday. Are we going to be in a final? Yes, we are. Branco with it. Sheffield Wednesday are in a final. Oh, no, 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 I'm not talking about a Champions League. Pfft, I expected that. I mean the FA Cup. All his team's fully fit till he's got a week's rest. But it will go to the final with a trophy. We've won the domestic double and we were four points off Man United in the league. Four points. We will have Champions League football again if we fail to be Inter in this finale. Honestly, what a journey. What a journey it's been. I don't want to see any top scorers. We're at Old Trafford into Milan. We've just beaten AC and we've got Mason Mount experienced here. So come on, the team with the Paramount Plus sponsorship on them, of course. We've got Money Mace and hopefully they don't leave us with a mountain to climb at the end of this because they're actually running straight through us. Lads, are we are scared to put a tackle in? We're not going 1-0 behind straight away, are we? That could have been really disastrous, but still Van Bommel is absolutely shredding defenders. Hang on, this could be a chance for us. Van Bommel should really be 1-0, but Baku on the edge of the box to Bernardo Silva. He's one who can shoot, but we're going to trust our man. Was that saved? Unbelievable chances as they take this corner. I've just realised Acuna was the actual player that we sold the centre-back who joined into Milan. That was a close one. Not very convincing in our action still. Wahi with the run. We've actually been done to the side right there. That's a ball in and that is yet another save, Bijlo. For the majority of our domination, it is actually Milan who kind of seem like they're on top still. We just need to keep at them. Come on, pressure on this. We do do well when we put the pressure on and I just said do do. Illiterate mistakes are all right, but still we need to make no mistakes here because we've got a run on. Here's Kubo switching a ball to the other side of the box. What a save from Van der Voort. 
Or oh, Mason Mount beaten to the header. Biggest chance for us so far. But let's keep going, shall we? Because we really need this. We're just not getting the chances, but it will come at one point. Kubo, he cuts inside himself. He goes for himself. Oh, and it's a bit of a mix-up, lads. We have just over 10 minutes left. Keep pushing on like we have done. No way the referee's blown for handball there. We were away. We were away with Gasama, but still we'll keep on playing on. Van Bommel, he's on the wrong side of the field for him, but he's got a ball into Kubo. One more in the middle. Baku has got it across and that's offside. No, 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 no. Bernardo Silvia killing me, man. You just had to stay a bit of a yard on. But still, we've not gone long left. And could we have a chance? I can't even speak. That's a ball. No way we didn't just score that. We've literally got one minute left. Mason Mount whipping in the box. No, it's not going to be our time. Hopefully, added time would be our time. We were all over him in that second half. And oh, some wayward passes at the start of this first one of added time. We can't go wrong now. Still, it's an embarrassment that they're unscathed going into this second half of added time. But that is a ball through onto Jeldad. Off the bench, he can't do it. One of the worst, most tamest shots really I've ever seen. As The half's going to end any minute as well, I can just tell. That pass didn't go backwards and it's after all this penalties which is a 50 50 lottery come on though let's get started we deserve to win this wally saved by mijlo that's a good start but it doesn't matter if we miss our penalty which gelled hard <sighs> can you believe it because yep they score straight after anyway got to get it out of his minds and just score immediately ourselves oh the keeper didn't stick his hands out Hansberg or Mansberg with the actual miss or save. That's a miss. I can't even keep up with this. My brain isn't working because now we have the chance. We don't take it. Of course they scored their penalty afterwards as well. It's on to Kubo and Kubo scores. It's on. It's off. It needs to be off again for Malaria. Why is he not sticking his hands up? Now they actually have a chance to win this. Kasama sticks it in the side netting though. And we keep on going. Top corners are the ones for us. Vargas. That is a very poor penalty. And it leaves Bernardo Silva. That's too much power. That's way too much power. That's not enough power. Oh, not enough. It is enough. It is enough. It is enough! Bernardo Silva has done it for Sheffield Wednesday. That is trophy number five. The treble has been won at Old Trafford for the Owls. We have made them from the worst championship club to the title winners of the Champions League. The best team ever. And it's Bernardo Silva to lift it himself. There we go. He has done it. He has warranted that after taking us right there. I literally can't speak. He's getting red hot in this new new setup but thank you very much for watching of course if you do want to see another save comment down below i'm seeing a lot of people asking for the grimsby save and i'll say you never know but for now get suggesting down below and i will see you very much in the next one